mentioned, I'm an undergraduate student, which means that you've caught me at a very bad time. I'm in the middle of midterms and papers, so on an average day, I'm sleep deprived, four hours or less. I got up very early to cover up the dark circles under my eyes this morning for you. I'm over-caffeinated, always in sweatpants, stressed out, and to be honest, bored in my classroom a lot of the time. Now, um, my disclaimer is that I'm not a expert in education. I don't have a bachelor or a master's degree. I don't know a lot about educational institutions. I'm simply a student. And for the purposes of this very short presentation, I would like for you to think of me as an infantry soldier on the ground, adjusting my every move and thought at the directions of all of you, the captains of education, and at times the gatekeepers to my future. Now, you gatekeepers have told me on a number of occasions that there's a certain skill set that I should possess in order to be successful. Very simple things like working with others, talking and communicating effectively, tactical problem solving skills. And we've noticed that there are graduates who go into the workforce that don't have these skills. Art students who can't relate theory to reality or scientists who can't think outside of science or just students who lack general professional skills. Scary. And certainly we've been forced to realize this as a result of our ever-changing world. Disciplines, issues, problems, they're not divided anymore. And the solution to the world's common and numerous problems actually necessitates innovative and interdisciplinary thought and action. Which is weird because our educational criteria doesn't really speak to that. In fact, Usually, our success is a determinant of whether or not we're able to regurgitate information in a very short amount of time, or if we can answer really obscure multiple choice questions, or in some cases, how much boredom we can endure, like a term paper assignment that I received in second year. Now, to explain this, I would like you all to close your eyes and go back to the time when you were an undergraduate student, maybe not so long ago. It's the last week of classes before final exams in April. And the sun is shining, tulips are rising, and your sleep bank is in serious need of a stimulus fund because you have very little, if any, energy or motivation left to write term papers. Yet your professor, like the one in my scenario, still hadn't assigned your term paper topic worth 40% of your mark until today. Write a 2,000 word essay on your interpretation of the following statement. Believe those who seek truth. Doubt those who find it. 2,000 freaking words. I don't know who is more pissed off, the student that had to write it or the teaching assistant who had to mark it. <laughs> what did this teach me? Critical thinking? Problem solving? No. How to endure an assignment that didn't inspire me, challenge me, teach anything new? Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, since then, I have had really positive experiences in the classroom. I've received marks for simulating a UN high-level panel report on peacekeeping. In one instance, the opportunity to fulfill an internship in my field instead of writing a term paper, which is fantastic. It's an indicator that education is changing for the better. So great, but in my field of international relations, like I think most people, you actually have to go outside the classroom to get the professional experiences and to meet the individuals that will have the biggest impact on your professional development. And in my case, have had defining moments for both myself and for my future career. Because in the real world, as a speaker has already mentioned, it's addictive. In the real world, I can debate about policy in Afghanistan with a NATO director, like I did this summer in London. Or I can practice my problem-solving abilities by simulating a UN committee in New York. Or when bringing K9 to campus in September and planning big events, I learn how to work effectively in a professional environment how to meet deadlines, how to solve problems that come up at the last minute. So great, because no one would want to work with me if I didn't have those skills. No one wants to work with anyone that doesn't have those basic skills. And the classroom doesn't always teach you that. So then sadly, we have to agree that there is a huge lag in our educational system. Because when I visited law school admissions officers across the country last summer, they were thrilled. They said, yeah, we definitely need students with these experiences and these skills. I mean." The professional realm of law demands it of you. Yet the primary indicator, and in some cases the only indicator, 
of my acceptance with my standardized test score and my GPA. Why? Why are we changing our expectations but reinforcing the status quo by insisting that a number on a transcript is the only indicator of a student's past and future success? Even UBC is guilty of this. The majority of undergraduate students that were admitted this fall only had to meet one standard. Granted, it was the highest median average in the country, 89%. And given that university is so different than high school, what does that actually tell us about these students? Not a whole lot. And what do we do about the students who aren't getting these experiences outside of the classroom? The ones who aren't developing these skills? Can we even blame them? I mean, our system isn't rewarding them for getting their noses out of the book. Now, if anyone can do anything about this, it's the great people in this room today who have taken time away from their beds this morning and their families and friends to come here and to talk about education. And students like me are so appreciative of that. So I ask you, what can we do to create a learning environment that reflects the real world instead of excluding it? And how do we reward students that strive to succeed within it? Thank you.